the times to be changing pretty soon in many ways, right? Just as the clocks are going to be changing, I expect the times to be changing. Right now, it's uh, there's a um, uh, how it, how many weeks is it? Six weeks? Uh, 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 which, uh, yes. Yeah, six week period in normal years and an eight week period in leap years. We're in, we're in a Jewish leap year right now called Shovavim, right? Shovavim. Shovavim is where the uh, the creative energy that's that that building block of creative energy that creates the reality in which we in which we live comes into this reality comes in after essentially after uh, Christmas Hanukkah time right that that that's where when, when it enters in and it's a time when if you uh, if you're not aware of it right that creative energy could be used for good could be used for evil right I think that creative energy is being used to take down the world, right? To, to dismantle the world in, uh, in which we're living in. And I'm seeing lots and lots of examples of that. Firstly, firstly, uh, I uh, the, the, there's a thing going on in New York which is fascinating me. Absolutely fascinating. No, not you. Um, uh, what's the word again? In, in Georgia, which is absolutely fascinating, which is the Trump uh, racketeering case. So this uh, DA bought, bought these charges against Trump. Uh, which which were nonsense. They were like insane nonsense. Uh, and yeah, you know, they just there's no legal basis for them whatsoever. But it doesn't really matter, right? Because the because they're the people in charge, right? And they don't give a damn about the law, right? They, they, they yeah, they have complete control of the government, the judiciary, uh, uh, and they're like, we're just going to screw you over. Same same in New York, right? <laughs> same thing happened in New York. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I just saw saw since Sabbath ended that Trump was. Um, Accused of fraud. I mean, this is how insane it is. He was accused of fraud by the DA. They had to change the laws to be able to try him. The fraud he was accused of is borrowing money for a building project. Uh, and all the money was paid back along the terms satisfactorily. But they said that he inflated the worth of his Mar-a-Lago estate to uh, act as collateral. And that he said that he says that Mar-a-Lago estate was about 18 million. Excuse me. There's a bit of land. There's a, like a house next to it, which is what uh, uh, one fiftieth the size, which is worth like twenty million, right? And then they've got the uh, uh, the big hotel on that, and it, it's a it's a very high end business. It's worth a billion at least. So anyway, they decide, no, you're guilty without a trial. Oh, you are guilty, right? And so they just ordered him to pay three hundred and fifty four million. Doesn't sound good. Same thing in in, in Georgia. It didn't sound good. This woman, uh, Fanny Willis, uh, indicted him. That's where the that's where the monk shot that's basically making him president uh, came from, right? The, the, she indicted him on uh, politically motivated bullshit, and uh, uh, it's not going well for us. See, that's where I think this this year is going. I think we're going to see everybody, you know, on the wrong side of history. Throw everything they can. At the Donald, and we're going to watch it all implode, like the like these two two examples. So, um, for some reason, the DA Funny Willis was, was on uh, was on the stand. Right, they got her on the stand about something to do with this, and she absolutely blew herself up. Right, uh, uh, it, it it she completely blew herself up. It is so bizarre. Uh, let me show let me show you the clip. It's good. It's and like when I watch this, I go. Did that really happen, right? And for me, this is pr the, the only thing that would make this clip make any sense is the uh, existence of God, <laughs> like like running everything. I, I'm like in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get fifty dollars, you throw it in there. When it's been my whole life, when I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that, like. Yeah, so that's illegal, darling, right? That's called embe embezzlement. I can't remember. But that's like a serious crime, right? That that uh, uh, it looks like she. It, it, it's um, it's uh, uh, going to bring her down, right? Look, like it, it imploded. It blew up in her own face. Same thing with this thing in New York, which I don't think is going is, 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 is going to fly. The three hundred fifty-four million he's been ordered to pay. Uh, Trump just and wealth just increased three billion because of True Social. I would love him to be able to liquidate three hundred fifty-four million from his shares in True Social. And say, here you go, <laughs> and then go back to Twitter. That would be freaking hilarious. But yeah, I think 
everything we're going to see is just blow up in their face. And we're watching it happen in real time, right? We are we are watching the crumbling of, well, both society, but also I think the people who control society. We're watching the absolute kind. Of, and I think that's tied into the, the Kabbalistic time that we're in. So uh, this period, Shavavim Tut, because uh, it's longer during uh, uh, leap years, ends next week, right? Also, it's my, my mother's uh, yacht site, which is the anniversary of her passing on Monday, I think. Yeah, so which, which is uh, a relatively big deal. So, uh, uh, so, I'm, so like, by the time we finish uh, uh, this period, we, we, also, I think reality is mapped onto the uh, the serialization of the Old Testament that we read every, every week in short. So right now, uh, we, we basically we had the story of the Exodus and the creation of the Jewish people, which I think, again, it it's parallel to the creation of holiness in, in the real world through this new energy coming in. So uh, um, what was that up to? So the... Uh, um, uh, was it crazy on you and you coming? Well, oh man, it's lost my train of thought. Oh, wait, 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 I'll get it back. I'll get it back. Uh, uh, oh, right, right, right. So now we're up to a bit. We're, we're in this week and next week's ones. Uh, actually, in the next few weeks, nobody understands whatsoever, right? This week was all about uh, creating the vessels for the Jewish temple, the, the Ark of the Covenant, for example. Yeah, uh, and, you know, there's a bunch of different stuff like that. And if you know it well, it explains to you the mechanics as the metaphysical mechanics of reality like you know the uh the way that uh, you have a thing they have a menorah which is like a light thing signs that there's a table in there and the table is representative of uh, your financial well-being or the financial well-being of the world which and the menorah the candelabra is representative of god's light in the world right uh and oh that reminds me i got it let, let me see if we can get any, anybody to bring this down one second, one second, because I would like to show you. I, sh I, sh I should have sent this me message just now, uh, uh, before I started. But again, I didn't have enough bloody time, right? Not enough time. Okay. Here we go. Hello, Team Lebeckin. How are you doing? Uh, uh, I'm in the middle of a live stream right now, literally right now. And I would really like to show people the uh, thing that uh, Ari got at the kiddish today that the uh, uh, kids made for him. There was two things. You can bring that down. Also... In my uh, in my Gomorrah, which is on the shelf with the other Gomorrahs, uh, there's a tour of tidbits in there. If you could bring, if anybody could bring that down for me, that would be Fan Dabby double dozer. Fan Dabby. Also, uh, a little bit more water. I, I didn't did, I, I didn't re refill my water bottle when uh, before I started. That would be fan. If somebody could bring me a care package with all all the above in, that would be lovely. Aye, right, really nice. There you go. Do it. Let's see if anyone's going to do it. My mind is on no. <laughs> My money is totally on no. Well, we will find out. We will find out. Uh, um, so, yeah, and then my my, my 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 other son was also out of gas. Oh, this was really cute. I just hope I can find this. Uh, where was it? Was it? Oh, man, I hate what's that. I just really hate it with every fiber I'm being, right? I genuinely do. Where is it? <laughs> okay, fine. So this is funny. Uh, here, one second, share screen. Uh, print tab. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Doink. So, this is my newly married son, right? Uh, uh whose hair is just out of control. Uh, uh, and he's been uh, in, in Gaza for a few weeks now, right? It's been you know, like, like some time. Every time I try and move to it, one second, wait, I'll do it that way. Uh, wait, wait, there you go. So he's been in Gaza for a few weeks now. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, his young wife would like him to come home, frankly, and not be killed horribly. Uh, uh, we're all kind of on board for that, frankly. Uh, uh, anyway, so he's this, uh, he's a commander. Uh, uh, so he wrote on this rubble, uh Titliki uh, etza dude, let's turn on the hot water. Uh, I need Baderek. I'm on the way. Big, uh, uh, big heart, right? Big heart. And then here. Uh, 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 <laughs> look at his hair. He has a he has had a haircut since uh, uh, October seventh, right? He has a haircut, and he must have picked up some kind of spoil, some kind of, some kind of booty. 
from from Gaza, and he's having a cigarette. I didn't even think it was that much of a, it's not that much of a smoker, but you know, I figure when you're in combat, you're in combat. You know, it's okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I have no idea what what it is he has. It looks like no good, but man, look at the hair he's got going on. Well done there, well done there, that man. So uh, he's yeah, he's coming around soon. Basically, just say say, say, uh, say hello to my wife. My wife clutches. Uh, well, I do as well. You don't you don't sleep when you, when your kids are in combat, man. You do not sleep anyway. Anyway, let's keep going with the the general thing, the the disintegration of um, society, right? That's what we're talking about. So this is really funny by by Jack Puzzabet tying into this. Uh, funny when you testimony. So what, what was it? What? Hey, let me see. He had a quote with this tweet. Uh, uh, what do we start using AI to clarify the news? Hashtag uh, uh, Fanny Willis testimony evokes long-standing frustrations for Black women leaders. What? You just incriminated yourself in a crime. Uh, Donald Trump's unprecedented fine evokes long-standing frustration for white male leaders. I guess you're using AI, right? I guess you're using AI. I, th- I, uh, uh, I guess that's what's going down. Uh, uh, but yeah, look, society is very clearly uh, uh, degenerating, crumbling. So I saw these couple of videos, which I think really, really, really br- brings that point home. Tucker Carlson in Russia. People are freaking out, right? People are freaking out. Tucker Carlson in, in Russia. To me, it sounds like good journalism, frankly. Uh, where are we up to five? So this is uh, uh, this one, which blows my mind. I went from amused to legitimately angry. Um, so we were guessing what this would cost. Everybody here is from the United States buys groceries. By the way, do you notice there's no purple head weirdos throwing uh, uh, stuff off the shelf saying, get rid of the Israeli merchandise, death to Jews. You notice that's not going on there in Russia. And we didn't pay any attention to costs. I mean, admittedly, there aren't any Jews left. But, uh, you know, that's probably why. We were just putting in the car what we would actually eat over a week. And we all came in around 400 bucks, about 400 bucks. Um, it was $104 US here. And that's when you start to realize that ideology maybe doesn't matter as much as you thought, corruption. If you take people's standard of living and you tank it through filth and crime and inflation, and they literally can't buy the groceries they want, at that point, maybe it matters less what you say or whether you're a good person or a bad person. You're wrecking people's lives in their country. And that's what our leaders have done to us. I, you know, I can't disagree with him in any way. And, and there's a weird thing in the um, in the religious in this in the sexual religion as well. They do not trust Tucker Carlson at all. They think he is anti an anti semite, right? Uh, uh, I don't think he's an anti semite. I re- I really genuinely genuinely do not. Right? I think he's uh, um, I think he's uh, an isolation. I think he's America first. I think he's appalled what's happened to his country. I don't get the vibe he doesn't like Jews. Right? Uh, a little less so. From uh, uh, Candy Owens, who I, I I think look the black community like the Muslim community as well have lots of cultural anti-Semitism, right? They have a lot of cultural anti-Semitism, uh, which I think you know it's, it's very hard to like scrape that off, especially if you're not aware of it. So I think there might be anti-Semitic influence on on Candace Owens, I, 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 but Carl Carson, I Carson, I just don't hear it at all, right? I do not hear it at all. And coming to a Russian grocery store, the heart of evil, and seeing what things cost and how people live, it will radicalize you against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway, radicalized. We're not making any of this up, by the way, at all. Yeah, I know. And people are freaking out like, oh, you're carrying water for Putin. No, he's telling the truth, right? Uh, uh, And look, Putin is almost certainly a bad guy. Never met him, right? Almost certainly a bad guy. But I don't think he's any worse than Biden or Cameron or any like literally any of them. You want to tell me Rushi Sundak it has a higher character than uh, uh, Vladimir Putin? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I think he's more of a pussy, but I don't believe you. And I think th- this video really rings at home, right? Mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Uh, yeah, doink understand a society is through its infrastructure, the places where people gather, the places where they go to travel. If you've got a lot of people in one place, it tells you a lot about the people. So with that in mind, we're standing in front of the Kievskaya metro station and there's a train station next to it. Now, the metro station was built by Joseph Stalin 70 years ago. And the question is, how's it doing now? It can't be doing as bad as the New York subway. And I've been to England in how many years is it? 
was the 50th anniversary. It might be 10 years. I haven't been to England in a long time, right? I go for a long, long time. I can't imagine the tube's doing any better. After 70 years. So we went into it to take a look, and what we found shocked us. Now, that's not an endorsement of Stalin, who was bad, obviously, nor is it an endorsement of the current president, Vladimir Putin. You may not like him either. No, it's an uh, uh, indictment of our current leaders, right? Wait till you see this, this, this train station. But it doesn't change the reality of what we saw, or more precisely, didn't see. There's no graffiti, there's no filth, there are no foul smells. There are no bums or drug addicts or rapists or people waiting to push you onto the train tracks and kill you. No, it's perfectly clean and orderly. And how do you explain that? We're not even going to- no, I mean, that, that really is a question. How, I mean, yeah, it's a totalitarian regime. I'm not arguing with you there, right? I, 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 how do you explain that? Why is their standard of living so much better, right? It, it, think, oh, 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 one second, one second. I have, I, I have a care package coming. Thank you, my darling. Oh, and water, everything. You okay? Okay. <laughs> One second. Fine. So somebody did deliver it. It was, it was quite impressive. I'll show you after this, right? This is this is wild. Uh, yes. That's not our job. We're only going to ask the question. And if your response is to shout at us slogans dumber than the slogans we used to call Soviet and mock, that's not really an answer. It's an avoidance of an answer. How does Russia, a country we're told is a gas station with nuclear weapons, have a subway station that normal people use to get to work and home every single day? Right, like, I, in the 80s, we, we, when we looked at Russia, it was like, oh, it has a shitty standard of living compared to us. The West is so much better, right? Do you remember that? Yes, we do remember that. That's nicer than anything in our country. We're not gonna get, we're not gonna speculate. We're just going to raise the question and wait for someone in charge to give us an answer. They're not going to, Tucker, mate. They're not going to. What is the answer? So we'll stop the lecture and let you take a look for yourself at what the Kievskaya metro station in Moscow, Russia, looks like today, February 2024, in the middle of a war. Here it is. I mean, put the music on as a bit. It's a bit manipulative there, Tucker, mate, but it does the trick. You know, I'll take the music off because I'll probably end up uh, copywriting, blocking it. But uh, look at this place. I, this, to me, talks of love and pride for your own society, something that is so deeply lacking. Right. I mean, look, you have all these like anti-Semitic marches going on every week in London and uh, throughout England uh, and America calling for Jewish genocide. Right. Uh, uh, people jumping on the war memorials just have no respect for the culture of your country or, the, or your, your civilization. Right. And even, they were born there and they, I would say they're part of that civilization. But like, like, like you can see the social decay. Right, you can see the social decay. Um, whereas there, you, you again, it's a totalitarian state. I don't believe they have free elections, which I think is terrible. Also, I don't think America does either. I don't think there's anything you can say on a moral basis that, about Russia that there isn't equally bad with America right now. It's just, it's a, uh, um, I, I, yeah. But at least Russia, you have, uh, uh, you know, at least the bloody trains were on on time. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, it's, um, I think, very indicative. Fine. So before we get to the chat, I want to show you this thing. So, you know, in the news, you you you, you often see talking heads saying, the Israelis are performing a genocide on the... Uh, um, and we are kicking their asses. Don't get me wrong. We are kicking their asses. But some of his home think, thinks that, that most hostages are alive and in uh, Rafa. Right? The place where everyone's saying, no, don't go into Rafa. Don't go. Oh, that'll be bad. Oh, you'll never beat Hamas by going to Rafa. Don't go into Rafa. Fuck you, cunt. Fuck you, cunt. We're going into Rafa. We're going into Rafa. We're going to get as many of the hostages out and we're going to eliminate Hamas. That is going to happen. Anyway. You know, uh, 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 just about every, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
every uh, 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 argument against Israel is all based on the evil Israeli soldier, bloodthirsty, the evil Jew, wants to kill as many Palestinians as possible. Oh, my God, 30,000 are dead. That means quite including, what, 20,000 children, 12,000 children? Excuse me. A, how do you know? Because Hamas told you. No, it's the UN. It's the UN. Well, the UN told Hamas and the UN believed them. And also the UN and Hamas work together. Uh, um, it's, uh, 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 and also, how many of them are 12-year-olds with dollies and how many of them are 17-year-olds with, with the uh, uh, Kalashnikovs? So we have a very different view in the Jewish world. So my son was home and somebody gave him this package, right? This package came to, uh, 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 was made by kids, school kids in, in, in America. For the uh, for the soldiers, right? And they put all this stuff in dude wipes. Kind of, they, they, there's great stuff in it. Chat this Advil, uh, and they and they, my son was saying we have we have like things like this all over our. Uh, uh, we, people send this stuff all over our, uh, our tank. Do my wife bring down the other one? The other one had a really nice note on it, right? Beef. He had got beef jerk in it, right? Like this is from America to here, right? This isn't even local. We view our soldiers not just as intensely moral, but heroes. And they are bloody heroes. They, they absolutely are heroes. You know, uh, um, so where, did my wife bring down the other thing? Oh, so, so the other one was a chocolate bar. It had this really sweet note written on it that said, thank you for protecting us, right? This is how we view uh, uh, the idea. And also, look, the IDF, to me, they're like Thunderbirds. Whenever there's a problem in the world, they go there and they sort out. So... Yeah, this is the last thing. So this magazine comes out each week. Torah Titbits, right? Torah is the name of uh, uh, the Bible scroll. It's like the everything about uh, uh, Judaism is encapsulated in the word Torah. Torah, right? It's like, like that. So wait a minute. Uh, uh, one of the interesting things about it, firstly, there's this thing going on. Beryl Wine, he's, he's actually a really good historian, right? If you're interested in history, Beryl Wine knows this stuff. Another guy, uh, Ken Spiro, also, if you're interested in history, but look at the series he's doing. Man, this is depressing. February 17th, anti-Semitism in the Bible. Well, it goes back a while. Then 24th, anti-Semitism in the Greek period. Anti-Semitism in the Ro under the Romans. Anti-Semitism in the early Christian period. Anti-Semitism in medieval times. Anti-Semitism and like, like, this is a, how many weeks? Is it? Eight, eight Saturday nights. Uh, uh, anti-Semitism in medieval, anti-Semitism during the in uh, Enlightenment. Marxist anti-Semitism and anti-Semitism today. Man, that is not a happy, uh, 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 that's not a happy, um, Happy little story. So anyway, basically it's ads and people writing stuff um, about you know the the bit the bit bit in the Bible that, that that we're reading this week. So yeah, this one. So this one here amazed me because normally these things are shit, right? These things are that, not, I don't know I don't want to denigrate them, but they're not really. That I never I never read anything in them. I go, oh, I agree with that completely, right? Normally it's like mainstream uh really boring bollocks right that's how i would describe it mainstream boring bollocks so this one really had a good point it said the the, the title of the article is called the three wars and it said there are three wars going on right now and and, it, and i fundamentally believe this to be true right first we have the war in gaza uh force upon us but also the second war is the is the uh, media war, right? Where they say, you evil Jews, evil Jews, right? Uh, um, uh, and, yeah, I think uh, it's good to push back against that, right? So that's the second war. But then he ties it into a third one, which, again, I fundamentally believe in, right? I, fundam I fundamentally believe in, which is wokeism. Wokeism is 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 our conflict. It's where we were. To, it's it's why we're here, right? Because uh, uh, you know, like, so I was saying this over to somebody today, and they they are slightly woke, and they're like, "Oh, wokeism." I said, "Listen, if I can watch a, a, a Superman TV show without him sucking a dick, I I will be happy." It's all about sucking dicks, unless you're a girl. But girls also have dicks now, so I, I, it's like, stop with your woke bollocks. So you're pretending wokeism isn't around, which is their go-to thing, right? Because you. Whenever they say something's not there, whenever they say this, there's no evidence for that at all. There's no, well, the, uh, uh, that uh, Russian collusion was admitted uh, by the FBI, there's no evidence for that at all. That means there is a preponderance of evidence that you can't answer, right? Absolutely. So, uh, um, 
So then he ties it into the coming of the Messianic Age, which I think is coming, right? With this shove of Imperium, right? Which is shove of Imperium, which is ending one week from now, right? One week from now, and then the uh, ec- the book book of Exodus, which ends with the uh, the uh, uh, it's called the Mishkan. It was like the, the 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 traveling Jewish temple being set up for the first time, and the clouds of God's glory coming down and resting upon it, right? It, it, it was a union between man and God in a uh, very intimate way. Uh, uh, so I, I'm just hoping, so that's in how many weeks? That's uh, so that's three weeks from now, right? Three weeks from now, I'm hoping. And then and right after that is the, uh, it's, uh, well, three weeks from now, what are we up to? So one week from now, it's the, when when this finishes, it's uh, uh, called Pour and Cut, and it's a, uh, mini version because it's a leap year. Mini version of this this uh, 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 insane li- in, 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 insane holiday that we're gonna have a month later. But I think by the time we get that, hopefully, please, we'll be in a messianic era. Or a messianic era is coming. So how does this tie into wokeism? The war on, on, on wokeism because he compares the uh, becoming of a messianic age to the rising of the sun, which is it's not just for the Jews, right? Yeah, it might be our guy, but it's not just for, it's for the world. It's uh, uh, it's for everyone. It's to bring light to this this seemingly uh, uh, impenetrable darkness that has enveloped the world over the last several years. So I, uh, that's why I hope for it every day. Why? Because I would like to see it, but also I would like to see Doctor Who without chicks with dicks being like such a prominent thing in it. I would like to see anything without chicks with dicks. And it's not, oh, you can't stand trans people existing. No, I don't mind them existing. I do mind them co- screaming at me in my face constantly. Yeah, I do. I do. I do get somewhat irritated by that. Uh, uh, and so, hopefully, this era, this dark era of insanity, is coming to an end. Uh, and I've been saying that for years, but maybe, maybe, what, like a stop clock, one day I'll be right. <laughs> well, at least twice a day, I can be right. Okay. My name's Vila Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.